Guys, I did that thing again where I forgot to turn my mic on. So I've been talking for like seriously at least 20 minutes without actually having any words. So that's good. Welcome back to Ed's Western. It's been a long time. I've been really busy with work. Switched over to the day shift, which is awesome. I went on vacation. I don't even know what was in my last video, to be honest with you. I know I talked about doing some stuff on Leon, which I don't have a whole lot of footage on that anyways, because it's hard to get somebody out to videotape me when I go ride him. We got a new horse. So I'm going to do some of this on my new horse, Juniper. She originally came named as Ginger. As soon as I sold Theo, actually Claire sold Theo. Um, she did a very good job Claire venting, if you want to look at her page. I was scrolling through Facebook. I shouldn't be allowed to because every time I scroll through Facebook, I'm always looking at horses. I shouldn't be allowed to be in these groups. I just shouldn't. It's bad for me. It's bad for my wallet. Nobody benefits but the sellers. <laughs> I found Ginger. She's very skinny. I kind of like my animal big heartedness of me like went out to her and so I you know spoke with the owner and all I want to know is a couple things about it. Well you know of course I got like three paragraphs in return about her. These people aren't from what I understand aren't um, very educated about the horses. Moose! Come here! barking at something and she's ignoring me. Is there something outside? Why are the horses running around like nutsos? What's wrong? Should we check? Okay. <sighs> I'm not really sure what that was all about to be honest because there's nothing out there. Everybody's all worked up. I'm sitting in my kitchen so I can see at my sliding doors and I can see the horses out there. It's kind of nice to be able to just look out my window and see if they're okay in there. All out there looking at something. Makes me wonder what it is. So back to Junie. She definitely wasn't feeding her enough. They hadn't gotten their horse's feet done in a while. Junie's feet look terrible. Woody. Causing all sorts of problems. And I ultimately like having little project horses. I'm not a trainer by any means, but I like educating myself on behavioral issues with horses. I like learning how to fix these issues. I like being able to see the difference and tell someone, hey, like a couple months ago, this horse couldn't do this or this horse couldn't do that. It's very rewarding to be able to help a horse become a better version of itself along with me becoming a better version of myself as a you know horseman so I really enjoy doing that so i decided well she can be like one of three things she can be a pasture pal she could be potential horse for my husband she could be you know like something for somebody to come out and trail ride anyways junie doesn't steal horses food she maintains, you know, her limits and boundaries with you when you're feeding. She's very simple. And she does have, like, a natural fear of humans. She knows when you're mad. She knows when you want her to get the hell out of there. And she's respectful of that. Now, when you watch my video on our groundwork, you're going to be like, uh, no, she doesn't. Well, when you get her in the halter, it's a little bit different. My farrier came out. You know, probably two weeks after we got her, and she gained all this weight and stuff. And he started to try to do her feet, and her front feet were fine. Didn't want to let him um, do any rasping, whatever. I was like, I don't know if she's ever gotten her feet done. I just said, do your best. They were terrible. They were so long, lots of cracks in them. And then he went to do her back feet, and she, like, kicked out, like, the first time. Then he tried to pick up her back foot. I was like, yeah, don't worry about those. So... That is kind of my, that's my main goal from what I had on this video. So I have been trying to do some groundwork with her. Today was the first day that I really got into it with her. Um, like I said before, I was just trying to get out there and just kind of like, I'd start catching her. She didn't really like to be caught, you know, so I'd catch her. And then I'd stand there and just pet on her and love on her. 
I did, I have been, you know, trying to brush her and at first she thought that was terrifying and then, you know, it was okay, you know, it felt kind of good. So that, she got over that really quick. And, uh, but yeah, she was doing the same thing with me, picking up the back feet. She'll pick up her front feet. However, she doesn't want them messed with. So the farrier is going to be a consistent problem with her if I don't start working on that. Anyways, so I got out there today and tried to work with her. She's a little funny because some of the stuff that I did, she acted like she knew. And then she'd get really offended by like one slight movement I would make. And overall, it took me a really long time to get the, you know, calm, the, you know, the, the deep breath or, you know, the lick in her lips or, you know, whatever you know where she's like in a relaxed space. It took me, it took me a long time to get there with her. It's like questionable how much work she's had. Her previous owner said that people used to ride her. I'm not good on that thing. She doesn't know how to lunge, just cause I kind of just tried to get into that with her a little bit. Doesn't really know what that means, which doesn't, doesn't mean a whole lot because I don't have a round pen. So when I mean lunge, I mean like on a lunge line, not like in a round pen. So she very well might be able to go in a round pen and know exactly what I'm saying, but she doesn't know that. Don't eat that. Hey, Woody. <sighs> Trying to do fall decorations with a six month old kitten. It's like the worst. Hello. You. Hey, don't eat that. Thank you. Have a nice day. Anyway, so she, yesterday she ki actually kicked me. I was out there trying to mess with her. Like I was telling you, I was out there petting her, rubbing on her. I didn't have a halter on her this time. I just went out to say hello. And, you know, I kind of picked up her front foot, picked up her other front foot. And I was like, oh, she's being real sweet today. So I went around and kind of just tried to like pick up her back foot where, which is where I probably got like right to the end of her flank. And she was like, mm, no. So she started backing up away like away from me so she was her face was here and she backed this way woody honestly can we have nothing nice in this house so she started backing away from me so i just kind of started backing up with her and like within you know these horses i swear to god can just like i don't even know how she got me from this angle like flipped around and kicked me in my side which at first I was like shocked. So of course I was like standing there for a second, like holding my side. And then I was like, you know, that didn't really hurt that bad. And I pulled up my shirt and I was like, that's because it hit my muffin top. Yes. That's why I'm okay with having a little cushion because when you get kicked on the side by a horse, then it protects all your vital organs. So a little belly's okay. None of us, none of us need to be toothpicks. It's not good for anybody. Now, I did get some good moments of her just picking up her feet. I don't want to even, like, hold them at this point. I just want her to pick her back feet up without trying to kick out. Right now, my main concern is, like, we can pick up all our feet. Don't even want to hold them. I just want to pick them up without having some really dramatic reaction. That's pretty much all. I'm going to do some talking points through um, my little training session with Juni. So... Um, that'll be what I'm talking to you about next. So let's just take a moment here to notice my really awesome outfit of paddock boots, uh, long socks, and capris. Yeah, see, I'm looking back at the camera like, mm, maybe I should have picked a different outfit. So Junie's coming up to see us. Then she realizes I have a halter, and she's like, oh, mm, no, thank you. She tends to be a little bit hard to catch sometimes. However, today she was pretty good about it. Mm -mm. So first step of groundwork is catch your horse, which can be a little hard sometimes. I tend to not want to use treats or grain, so it takes me a second usually to get her. Hopefully, eventually, this won't be an issue, but who knows? We'll see.
I usually, when I go up to her or any horse that's hard to catch, instead of, like, trying to throw the lead rope over their neck right away, which freaks most of them out, I just grab their mane. This can be a little bit harder if you have horses with the short English mane. I never cut Junie's mane. I probably never will, because it's not like she's going to be going to a hunter-jumper horse show or anything. I'm going to fast forward here and bring her up to the gate. So what I'm doing here is I am just kind of pulling that lead rope on her back. Now, at this point, a lot of horses would really be concerned about this. Uh, she is not, as you can see. And that's why um, when I was speaking in the video earlier, I said that I think she knows some of this stuff because... I mean, like I said, normally a horse would be really concerned about this, and she has no concerns about it whatsoever, so. We'll kind of just move on, because this could go on for a while, because I did this with her for a long time. Oh, there, we're going to back up a little. All right, moving on. Okay, so here I'm going to start doing some backups with her. She doesn't know that when I walk towards her yet that that means that I want her to back up. So I'm just telling her she's a good girl because she even did it. She really hates to back up. Oh God, we're going to do this all over again. Very persistent with this, which you should be. Um, I make fun of it now because I'm watching myself do it, but you should be very, very persistent with the groundwork. So I'm going to just keep going through the video and kind of telling you what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. She doesn't want to do any of that. She doesn't want to back up at all. So I remember when I was out there, I worked on this for a long time because she really did not have any kind of recollection of like what my personal space was, what I meant when I was walking towards her like that. I really wanted her to back up every time. So I do a lot of this throughout the rest of the video. Let's see what I'm doing right here. I think, yep, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So when I walk forward and I turn around and look at her, that stop that she does is a sign of respect however now we're not backing up so that's an issue so I know that I worked on this a lot for the rest of the time I was out there with her because she was really good about if I'd walk forward with her and turn around she would stop right away she'd acknowledge that's my bubble um but she wasn't really getting the whole she needed to back up thing So as you can see, well, you can't even see it, but I have come back with a whip and I can't remember how quickly this goes south, but she really didn't care at first about the whip kind of being on it. Mm, yep, there it goes. Right there. Mm-hmm. And scene. So, since she was just acting like such a cow and she hates backing up, that's what I um, was picking to use as her, I guess, form of discipline, really. You want to get their feet moving. That's what you hear a lot. When, when they don't want to do something, you want to move their feet. You want to make them work because they're going to learn to understand that once they you know, do what you want them to do, they get to stop working. They get to stop, you know, working so hard. So as you can see, my little backup, you know, worked for the most part. And what you couldn't see in the video is that I was, you know, yanking on her with the, with the rope halter. So now we're going to stop being such a cow and a turd about the whip. So I spoke too soon because she's just having a little kick fit here, which here we go again. We're going to have to back up. Don't like to back up. 
Now you can't really see me, so I'll keep going. So here she kind of gets fussy with me. She had been fine with the whip until about now. Now she's just being silly about it. Like, I've been doing this for a while. It's desensitization. So she's going to learn that that's not what I want. I want her to stand there. No matter how hard I crack the whip, I just want her to stand there. I didn't ask her to move. There we go. Now she's got it. So I love how I look like such a moron trying to do this. So when I march up to her like that, my intent is for her to back out of my space. Now she doesn't know what that means yet. So that's why I continue to do it over and over again. And the one thing I do like is when she does take at least one step back. That's why I'm petting her for that. There, right there. Beautiful. So now that I've done my groundwork, um, I am going to start trying to desensitize that little leg area back there that she has the issues with. Uh, I try to pick up a front hoof here. As you can see, that's all good. No problems. I kind of just go to pick up a back hoof. And she is not cool with it. So I use my whip to kind of put it on her back leg. And you can see that she is not tolerating that very well at all. Then what I start trying with her is I start trying to just touch that back foot with the whip. So every time she lifts it without kicking, I just kind of leave it alone for a second. Uh, I didn't like that though. That's alright. I just want her to lift it. I don't want her to keep it up in the air. I just want her to lift it and put it back down without throwing a fit about it. So what I start to do is kind of just introduce touching her leg. And this, ten, this is obviously an issue for her. So now what I'm going to do to discipline her is, is move her feet. Make it something that she does not want to do to get this reaction. So I'm just going to keep doing this over and over and over again. See, now we have problems again. So we're going to keep getting in trouble for doing that. So here we go again here. What I'm, gonna do is I'm just going to pet her, pet her down her leg until I get her to pick it up. And even that's just okay. Even, mmm, she's really asking for it, for real. Back at it again. All I want her to do is lift up her back leg. Mmm, she really thought about doing it that time. I'm gonna, you know, trust her. Give her the benefit of the doubt. Doesn't have to be high, just like that. Just a tiny little step. She can back up if she wants to. My goal is just to have her lift her foot without kicking it out. And every time I touch her leg, I want her... Beautiful. Love it. This is a little bit different of an angle for you, but as you can see, she just lifted her leg, put it back down. No drama. That's exactly what I want. So every time I do that, I'm going to pet her, give her a second, and go back to it. Even though she just moved over right there, I'm really not concerned about that. I'm not going to worry about that. I just want, like I said, pick it up, put it down. Pick it up, put it down, no kicking. Love that right there. By the way, guys, Penny just wanted to make sure he was getting his screen time. Something I'll tell you about horses is that their hemispheres don't connect. So anytime you do something on one side, they're not going to remember it on the other side. She was good there, which I liked. But it's not going to last, just like that. Like, I knew her intention there was to kick me. So we're going to move our feet. 
And we're going to try again, because that's what you do. You just keep doing it over and over and over and over again. So I've come back to the whip on this side to start with the, you know, the touch that I did on the other side, because the first time I went down there with my hand, it was a negative reaction. So I want to start with the basics, and I want to start with something that is going to be safe for everybody. And that is going to be touching with the whip. So now that I've done that, I can start with the touch again. That was a really good leg lift there, and even there as well. And you can even tell with the way that her facial expression is, she's relaxed right now. Whereas before, she really had started pinning her ears back as soon as I got to the back of her flank there. I don't spend a lot of time on this side. She kind of knows at this point what my intentions are. So I just get a couple really good leg lifts and then I go ahead and I just end it on that note. So basically that's what I'll tell you about this is that I'm going to be out here every day doing this for as long as it takes to be able to teach her that Lifting her back legs up is not going to put her in a really vulnerable vulnerable position. That's why she's so defensive about it in the first place, because she feels that sense of vulnerability. So if I continue to tell her she's going to be safe in this spot, she's going to continue to um, excel in this area of, of her learning and her groundwork. So that is all for today. So we've discussed Junie and where she's at. And hopefully next time I have a video, it won't be like 5 million years later. And um, I can show you kind of what's going on with horses. So stay tuned for the next Ed's Little Question. Thanks, guys. Yeah.